Welcome back to an instant reaction edition of the Net Report podcast. I'm your host, Mike Broadbent. Joining me once again is my co host, Richie Schneiderite. So, we'll have a game recap for you guys either tomorrow or Tuesday. We are joining you guys today because Rutgers received a commitment this morning from a visitor from Florida. He's a quarterback recruit out of the class of 2025. His name's Sean Ashenfelder. He plays in the Jacksonville area. Uh, he was a guy who Rutgers, I believe, recently offered. Um, he's got a pretty healthy collection of, of uh, <clears throat> FBS offers. I think he's got close to 20. Um, so tell us a little bit about this uh, quarterback recruit that Rutgers just landed in the class of 25. Yeah, no, he's he's interesting. So he's got, a, like you said, he's got a lot of good offers. Um, he's got like Cincy, Pittsburgh, um, who am I looking at? South Florida, Liberty, UCF, Virginia Tech, West Virginia, um, and then a bunch of other like smaller FBS schools. But uh, yeah, I, I, I think he's decent. It's hard to tell really because he doesn't have a lot of tape out there. He does have an eight minute highlight film from last year, but he was playing mostly as a backup. He was, uh, I should say, splitting reps with the starter last year down at Creekside High School. Um, but he, he's a super athlete, um, and that's where it kind of leans into him being a baseball recruit. He's a 9 out of 10 on perfect grade, which is basically like rivals, but for baseball recruits. Um, I was told he has a he's able to throw up to 90 miles per hour, not accurately. Otherwise, he'd be a pitcher. He's a catcher and shortstop, it seems like. Also plays the outfield a little bit. Um, so he'd be kind of equal to like a four-star on, on the baseball field. Um, but when it comes to football – his passing yards are decent. He throws he throws an okay ball. There's there's some that wobble quite a bit. There's others that look really good. Um, and then he's he's just a super athlete. He ran 67 times last year for 350 yards and six touchdowns. This year so far, he's ran for 153 yards and four scores in three games. Um, his team doesn't seem like they're too good overall, which always is not helpful when judging a quarterback. But uh, I, it's intriguing. It's, he's definitely an intriguing kid, and and you get the kickoff to 2025 class pretty quickly. And uh, he actually was supposed to commit uh, before the game yesterday, but his flight got delayed, and he showed up literally like five to ten minutes before kickoff. So instead of showing up about three to four hours before kickoff. So, um, yeah, this was his second visit in a couple months. He was also on campus for the first time back in July and kind of loved it. And that was that was kind of the start of everything. And so he got the offer, and then all of a sudden he uh, came to Rutgers again, and that was it. He committed. Yeah, he kind of <clears throat> glossed over some stats from from last year. I'll, I'll just mm-hmm. kind of run it down. I just pulled up his max preps page. So last year he rushed the ball 67 times for 354 yards uh, and six touchdowns. He had a 100-yard game as well. Mm-hmm. This season through three games played, uh, he's got 40 carries for 205 yards and five touchdowns on the ground. Through the air, he's uh, thrown thirty. He's thrown eighty passes, completed thirty-four of them. Uh, that's a twenty or forty-three percent completion percentage. He's thrown for four hundred and forty-seven yards, four touchdowns, and four picks. Um, obviously, the numbers don't really jump out at you there, um, but the staff must see something they like. Like you kind of alluded to, he's a multi-sport athlete. Uh, he's a high. I'd say he's a high, more highly rated uh, baseball player than football player easily. Oh, yeah. um, so you got to wonder if that's a concern uh, that he might, you know, he's legitimately like he's legitimately good enough as a baseball player that he might get drafted by the major league baseball or yeah. the major league baseball drafts in a couple of years. So you got to have a concern there. Um, and I don't know, uh, this seems like a bit of out of, out of left field. Um, in terms of, you know, Rutgers has a lot of momentum on the field. They have a lot of momentum in recruiting. And this just kind of seems, uh, I don't know, I just kind of came out of nowhere for the first commit of the class of 2025. Um, yeah, I, I know after talking to some people in the know um, and hearing about it yesterday, um, it, it sounds like there a lot of people are comparing them to uh, an AJ Serace type who is like mobile, throws a pretty hard ball, throws an accurate ball, makes smart decisions. Um, it's, it's hard to say smart decisions when he's four and four on the year with four touchdowns and four picks. It, yep. Like I know you got to really watch the interceptions to see how bad, if they were bad throws or not, could just be a matter of his team, just catching a 90 mile per hour fastball to the chest and just letting it bounce kind of like <laughs> yeah, what that's we, true. we saw yesterday almost at one point. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but yeah, I mean, he has some tools to work with and I think that's kind of the key there. I know you said it off pod, but I'm going to say it on here. Uh, with AJ Serace coming in, with Gavin Wimsett playing a lot better, it's it's hard to see like a 2025 getting actual legitimate playing time until 
mm. later in the future, maybe like year three or four at the very minimum. Um, so I, I don't know. It's, it's an interesting get he's mobile. So, and like, like I said, he's got some tools you can kind of work with. Um, but perfect game who I said before rates baseball players, they had a nine out of 10, a nine out of 10 means you're a projected top 10 pick top 10 round pick. And that, that's, that's hard to turn down that money. So we'll see like what, what happens there because he clearly loves baseball too. Yeah. <clears throat> and I, I can't imagine, I know Rutgers fans will instantly think, you know, Jawan Harris in the recent past mm-hmm. and a guy like Pat Kivlahan played after his football eligibility had been exhausted. Um, yeah. I just don't see. I don't. I just don't see Greg allowing a uh, player to play both ways, or not both ways, but play baseball and football if they're on football scholarship, especially oh, I mean, quarterback. People let them play both ways. <laughs> that's that's also true. Uh, I mean, if we, if he had a Travis Hunter or something like that, would be one thing. Oh uh, yeah, uh, he'd do whatever he wants. Yeah, but <clears throat> yeah, no, this is a this will be one that. It's kind of an incomplete grade in my opinion because, like you said, he split time as the starter last year. He's in his first full year starting this year. So I think he kind of got to wait and see how he develops on the field. They must have clearly liked what they saw. When they what, did they have they seen him in person? Do you know? Yeah, they've had they had him at a uh, July that whatever July twenty eighth or twenty ninth <laughs> where they it's like not a camp but it's like some of the top guys come and it's like a barbecue event but they also camp okay. beforehand and it's like hey let's just watch you throw for a few times. Um. I also think I take it back. I think I said it bef- incorrectly before. I think they offered him in January, and I think that's when uh, someone I forget which coach went down to see him. Okay. Um, so or February, sorry, which is when they're all doing the evals for quarterbacks for the most part. But uh, he did tag Harris Simiak, so I wonder if Harris Simiak saw him because he is he's still a pretty good recruiter. He recruits Florida sometimes, and um, it makes me wonder if Harris Simiak saw him, reached out, and was like, "Oh shit, Kirk! Hey, look at this guy." But. Mm-hmm. Um, when was when would, what day was Kirk actually hired? Because that would actually make more sense why it's a Harris Simiak offer instead of a Kirk offer. Um, so we were Kirk. I remember playing playing that game for a while where we were waiting and waiting and waiting. Um, good question. Hold on, great podcasting. Uh, he was hired on January fifth. All right, so it doesn't matter. February third is when he got the offer. So, it, it the fact that he tagged Harris Simiak, like I said, kind of tells me he probably saw him first and was like, yo, Kirk, look at this guy. And that's just uh, how the ball got rolling. Yeah. So, I mean, he also picked a great game to come visit Rutgers. Obviously anybody who was there saw it. Uh, big win for Rutgers football, 35, 16 win over Virginia tech. Um, what were some other, what, what was some of the buzz you heard from other recruits following the game yesterday? Um, real quick before I go on to that, I just got to, an interesting text. He won't be playing baseball at Rutgers. He will just be playing football. Yep. Um, also, um, just looking at, I watched his tape in the background too, because I had it on repeat and his offensive line is awful. They're so bad. Yeah. But he's used to bad offensive line play. So you know what? Hear me yeah, out. This might work be, out really well. He'll be uh, nice and prepared. And th- there's one thing about baseball players that, <clears throat> oh, I guess two things. Mm-hmm. Uh, a playing quarterback that I think gives them a unique advantage. One is, they're typically better at throwing off multiple platforms. And Mm -hmm. when I say that is, you know, if you watch a guy like Matt Stafford, you can clearly tell he played baseball. Patrick Mahomes is even a better example. Mm -hmm. The reason Pat is so good at all those angles, well, part of the reason is because he grew up playing baseball. Like when you're playing shortstop and you have a ball that's hit towards the third base side of your glove and you have to kind of scoop it up and make a throw to first base, that requires so much athleticism and so much movement skills. Yeah. that you develop by playing baseball and that the same they can be very translatable as a quarterback and you see that in pat mahomes game if you watch him i mean he's made he makes a few like really athletic throws like that um the other, the other thing is they know how to slide and it seems underrated but like if you watch a guy like russell wilson every time he slides perfect form he's never putting his body in in harm's way and then if you remember when they're trying to teach robert griffin how to slide how much of a disaster that was he yeah. just kind of like crumbled. It looked like a can getting crushed mm-hmm. rather than a guy sliding. <laughs> so it's just it's simple, but mm-hmm. it's 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 something else that's uh, that's beneficial from playing baseball yeah. as a quarterback. Yeah, like Wimsit, like you said, and how, it gets me nervous as shit. Every time he runs, I'm like, oh my god, he slid head first twice uh, oh, against my the Temple, and I'm like, dude, Temple, what yeah. are you doing? Like, yeah. stop. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, no, going back to the recruiting aspect, uh, a lot of 2024 sounds like everyone had a pretty good time. They're all committed. They're all pretty solid. They're not going anywhere for the most part. Um, 2025s is where it got interesting because we heard about the Ashton Felder thing and he obviously committed a, a day later, a day later than you're supposed to. Um, Sine de Graffenwright, I think I pronounced that correct. Uh, Atlantic City High School kid's been on campus a couple times now. He's a really good athlete. He's a big, bulky receiver. Um, not sure how much real deal speed he has. I saw him in seven on seven at Rutgers. I saw him at Rutgers camp. Now I saw him again yesterday. He's a legit like six one, like probably one ninety ish, one one ninety five maybe. He, he's a he's a big boy and uh, he's he's a really good player. He's one of the best in the state. I think he's number sixteen or seventeen for us. So he he had a really good time. And then the the one I'm really kind of not puzzled, but I'm really keeping a close eye on is uh, Michael Carroll. Michael Carroll is a Penn State legacy guy. His dad played at Penn State, but he came back to Rutgers again yesterday. And he it sounds like he really, really loves Rutgers because it sounds like originally it, everyone expected him to be a complete like Penn State thing. He's, he's told people, he's told me specifically actually, that Penn State's his dream school. <laughs> um, yeah. And that was before they offered. And that was at Rivals Camp in March. He got the Penn State offer. He's been there a couple times, went there um, last weekend or the, the first weekend, whatever it was, September 2nd. Then uh, went to Rutgers September 3rd. Then went to Rutgers again uh, September 16th. So it's, it sounds like Rutgers might be able to pull this one off a little bit. It's it's a little more realistic than it was previously. So I would definitely keep a close eye on that. Um, I know he has, I forget if it's his head coach or a former head coach or assistant coach or someone that was he worked with previously is now at Rutgers. And I, I can't figure out the name of the, co- of the coach, but... Um, yeah, I mean, I think Rutgers has a legitimate shot here. Yeah, no, that's a, a big time recruit. Um, they had a pretty sizable recruit list yesterday, both in terms mm-hmm. of basketball and football. Um, so you, I'm sure we'll hear more and more about that. Um, oh, Brandon Stores was on campus. Forgot about Brandon that Stores was on campus. Jalen Harrell was on campus. <clears throat> both top 100 players in their respective classes or was was harold only a one-day trip yeah harold was a one-day trip okay. I, I just talked to him yesterday um trying to see if i could find this so he's uh definitely considering Rutgers. he has an nil agent though so it's it's going to play mm-hmm. a little bit of a factor i don't know how much he's looking for or how, how it's going to work or anything like that um but yeah he went to went to Rutgers, and then he was at the made hoops camp yesterday uh, visit went amazing, blah, blah, blah. What stood out was how they made me a priority. One, one thing that was interesting to me that he, that he told me, he, uh, he goes, they just told me that they want to make sure no matter what I get a degree at the next, at the college level, it doesn't matter hmm. if I go there or not. And I was like, all right, that's, that's a good, a good little uh, pitch from Pike there. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> offered him scholarship, uh, Rutgers, Providence, and Xavier are the ones after him the hardest currently. He's also talking with uh, Boston College and Wake Forest and Alabama, so keep an eye on those three. Uh, Alabama would be the one that worries me the most because they obviously do have a significant NIL program, um, and it's not just for football. I know a lot of people might speculate that, but hell, they might mm-hmm. have a better basketball program now because Nick Saban looks defeated. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. I could not believe how much they struggled against USF this past weekend. That's, but that's yeah. Side note. I guess I think I said it in the article. Wins a, in the Rutgers article. Wins a win, but I yeah. don't know if you're Bama and only beating them seventeen three. That's that's not really a win. A lot of the top teams struggled this past weekend. You look yeah. at Georgia; they were you know almost a thirty point home favorite against <laughs> South Carolina, and they you know that was a game South Carolina was winning fourteen to three at halftime. Mm-hmm. You look at Michigan; Michigan was you know it was a seven six game for a lot of the first half against Bowling Green. You know. JJ McCarthy yeah. looks like he got banged up and he threw three interceptions. Florida State only won at Boston College by two. They were a twenty eight point favorite yeah, too. That's that's a bad one. Ohio State took care of business, but uh you know, Penn State struggled for a while too. I know mm-hmm. you were really high on them. They ended up covering, so you you know, any team that covers to, is a, to win, a beautiful, beautiful little child. Like Rutgers has gone three and zero against the spread this year, so you love yeah. to see it. Um Michigan State, though, man, are, I are, to beat are they are, are they like at the the start of the the collapse of their season? They're two and one, so it was their first loss, but they lost at home by thirty four points. Not uh, mind you, it was to the eighth ranked team in the country in Washington. Not but man. Michael Penix Jr. looks like he's back. <clears throat> yeah, kid, kids a stud. He's in the Heisman talk now. 
Yep. Um, trying to look and see if he's played Indiana previously. I don't think he has. Or not Indiana. Um, Michigan State, I meant. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was at Indiana. Duh. Um, yeah, dude, they're in the Big Ten East. Yeah, every, it seems like every time he's played them, like 320, two touchdowns, 24 nothing. Um, yep. Like he, uh, 280, three touchdowns, they lost 40 to 31. But man, the man puts up numbers against Michigan State. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they seem like they're in complete turmoil. And I said it last night. Um, I don't really know if Mel Tucker will be back by then because it sounds like he's everything was consensual, but I'm not getting into that really that much. It's just maybe he's back by homecoming, but Rutgers couldn't have picked a better homecoming game. <laughs> I know. Um, we'll have a full breakdown of the game. Um, like I said, probably tomorrow if I had to guess, right, Rich? Uh, yeah, tomorrow <clears throat> would be the better bet. Uh, Tuesday, I uh, have a golf outing, so God, I can't miss Got that. It. All right, so stay tuned to your podcast feeds. I know we released late last night the live uh, post game show, which is kind of just like off the cuff, mm-hmm. and the recap is more of like, okay, we rewatched the film, we kind of read some articles. Here's here's what we think of things. Um, yeah. So we'll have more on the game. I, I hope my voice comes back by the time uh, <laughs> tomorrow rolls around too, because young I was, uh, fans, man. <clears throat> a lot of yeah, I was I was in the stands yesterday for the first time this season. Uh, great win, great time. But yeah, the, the Big Ten went one and four against ACC schools <clears throat> yesterday? yesterday. Yeah, I know Syracuse beat Purdue mm-hmm. um, on Friday. Maryland beat Virginia. Who else? Oh, who, so who someone, else someone said one and four. They're wrong then. Mm-hmm. Unless they meant yesterday specifically. Maybe they meant yesterday specifically. Um, Florida. No, where am I looking? Uh, North Carolina beat Minnesota. Beat the shit yeah. out of them. Um, Duke beat Northwestern. Louisville beat Indiana. Uh, yeah, that's it. So, hey, Rutgers, the lone uh, lone Big Ten victory against the ACC, who uh, I believe I called trash conference last week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. They're not great. But uh, if you look at those matchups, like North Carolina's ranked, Duke's <clears throat> ranked. Yeah, Minnesota should have been closer, I thought, though. Indiana's terrible. And uh, Purdue is hit or miss. Yeah, I don't, under- miss. I don't understand their team. See, now that's the thing, right? Rutgers' schedule, they got kind of screwed with the Big Ten West this year. Yep. You could have got Purdue on a down year. You could have got um, – who's the other one over there? Minnesota, I, I would have took over mm-hmm. Iowa. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's uh, definitely – but um, I, I said it last night. I'll say it again too. I, I, I do think they're they're pretty damn close to getting a bowl game. Yeah, you took care of business the first three weeks. Three games you had to have. That's three games that we circled on the schedule. And, you know, Jerry DiNardo called them matchup games. I called mm-hmm. them winnable games. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Whatever. Um, but I believe at this point, Rutgers, in co- according to ESPN's, like, matchup predictions or whatever, is uh, mm-hmm. proje- projected to go over six wins this year for the first time. I know oh, they're very close. Finally. Well, I just mean like we had like a seventy percent chance of winning, sixty-five to seventy percent chance of winning this mm-hmm. game, according to that, and now that's just marked up as a full win. So, uh, it was at like five point nine six wins, which, yeah, whatever, it should be six now. It's, this is a uh, great news for Rutgers, and like, like you said, Michigan struggled. So I, I'm not gonna say they might beat them, but you never know. Yep, I haven't been able to independently verify this, but somebody posted on Twitter that Rutgers has opened as a 20 and a half point dog to Michigan. Really? See, I was thinking more like, I said 14 to start yesterday, and then I re- we were, yeah, went back on that, and I was like, no, 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 it's going to be like 17, 18. I just, especially after their struggles last week, or last night for Michigan. Yep. <clears throat> Yeah, and I said this last week. If Rutgers is a twenty-plus point dog, I'm going to be betting them against Michigan. My stance has only been uh, strengthened on that based on uh, how Michigan played yesterday. And I, I, I again, we're, <laughs> we'll have a full breakdown. But I don't think Ruck, I think Rutgers played by far its worst game of the season on Saturday, and we still won by like almost twenty. Um, yeah, and that's that's all I need. To do. That's all, a win's a win, but it was definitely not a pretty one. Um, couldn't throw the ball for <laughs> yeah. shit, but. Seems like neither can Michigan, so yep. who knows? I don't see the spread anywhere. I don't know where people are getting at already. Um, 
again, I haven't been able to find it independently verify it, but our uh Um I'm looking at all the major sports books at least. I don't have the only one I don't have is Bet Rivers, but uh yeah, no, it's not on Vegas Insider, it's not on Odd Shark or anything like that, but uh for some reason Odd Shark gives me issues. I can't get on. It says like unavailable access denied. I don't know. Hmm. Not authorized to access Odd Shark currently. Whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Well, uh, whenever spread comes out, you'll see it on our Instagram, our Twitter, our um, message board, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm trying to think what else. That's really it, right? <clears throat> yeah, I think that's basically all we got here. Um, Ooh, if you're a Rutgers student and you're listening to this, I got a deal hmm. for you, buddy. Um, $15 for the entire year for the night report. I got to discount it for strictly Rutgers students. All you have to do is email me at R-U-R-I-C-H-I-E, R-U-R-I-C-H-I-E, at gmail.com. You just email me um, your via your .edu account, and I'll send you back a promo code. If you want to share it amongst students, great. If you want to share it amongst other people, I'm going to be pissed off, and I'm going to find out. Um, well, actually, I'll be honest. I don't really care, <laughs> but... Uh, my boss kind of cares, so don't get me in trouble. But uh, yeah, just hit me up, and I'll get—I'll give you a fifteen dollar promo code for the year, and you can join the message board that goes crazy over just about everything. <laughs> yeah, I was popping off yesterday, um, and it's—it always is more buzzy around road games because people aren't uh, at the game itself, so there's a lot mm-hmm. more action. So you're gonna want to get in for next week oh, uh, yeah. for the lead up because we also have. Some recruit reactions to the game that we'll have filed They'll up. They'll come up shortly. Yep, and you'll have uh, intel on all the latest basketball recruiting information because mm-hmm. a lot of that's going to be bubbling up because we had, you know, the number seventy-two recruit in the country, the number of yeah. forty-six recruit in the country. We got visits getting scheduled later this this football season as well. So you're going to need to be a part of the action. And there's nowhere, nowhere you're going to get that information better than the night report. So that's a fact. I heard other out. people talking about us in the press box yesterday. I thought that was interesting. Oh, yeah? What'd you yeah. hear? I'm not going to say specific names of who said, like, fucking rivals, fucking rivals. Like, oh, oh baby. Oh, I don't think I was supposed to hear that one. <laughs> oh, man. I couldn't take a guess. But yeah, I anyway. hate to see it. I actually I love to see it. it. <laughs> Oh, All right, God. guys. Well, thank you once again for listening. Um, take advantage of that promo code if you're a student. Hit up Richie. Uh, but for everybody at home, have a great victory Sunday. Enjoy the NFL action today. This has been another edition of Go the Giants. Podcast. Signing off.